Right, I just finished the book called Rolling Nowhere by Ted Conover. And it's about his life on the railroad, riding in the boxcar trains, rolling nowhere. And he uh, did it in his early 20s. The time frame was the, um, I think the late 70s. Okay, the book was published about uh, the early 80s, 1983 or so, and this is a time when they were, were phasing out the trains a lot more. The box cars are getting phased out. Uh, life on the rails uh, was not the same. As yeah, you know, it was kind of a dying, a dying romance, and he he uh, jumped. Jumped in on it full, like in, it, like his just by his his full self. He just he lived the whole life um, his self. He got busted by the bulls. He's ridden from city to city. He he uh, he's talked to many different homeless uh, tramps of a variety of culture and race he we're talking mexicans and blacks he he would talk to he would he would actively seek them out but at times he would uh, ride the rails by himself too just just because uh, a lot of times there there were just there was just no company and there he learned a lot on the way that he put into the book uh, for everybody it, that to uh, to to learn from because this is a very unique lifestyle, um, and it's it's really it's probably even less existent today than back then. Even though I th I believe railroads are being rein reinvigorated, rein reintroduced, but not so much with these these box cars. These open box cars are the most ideal uh, type of uh, car to to ride, but he's he's ridden quite a few other types there's different ways to ride them uh, when you when you only have uh, a select uh, type he's ridden in in the back of a caboose he's ridden in the in the car where the one was trailers that carry the cars he actually was able to uh, get him to get inside one of the cars that was unlocked he found the key he found the key in the in the gas cap tank where you enter the gas and then got in and he was able to like turn on the heater and the radio uh well that was only one time you, you, i mean these these are a lot like very different situations with with uh, whatever freight is being transported and uh the people he met um that my impressions was that they 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 don't really you know greet you they really don't say goodbye they're they're an unfriend they're they're friendly uh, for the most part the the tramps that ride these trains the homeless or whatever uh, but yeah they, they do have their problems they they may have uh, gotten hurt in, uh, in their lives and just don't don't really uh, bond that closely with people uh, it, and it and it, it goes across all cultures all all races Mexicans and blacks they. They're all they're all distrust they all distrust each other, that no matter what your race is. But in in a in a slight way, the some races do bond. They have bonded together. He, he's noticed a little bit closer. The blacks bond closer with each other. The Mexicans bond closer with each other. There is there is a racial divide there where races certain races the races will stick uh, with each other a little bit closer but not that not that close okay and in, in a lot of ways it's every man for himself uh, there's quite a bit of drinking and smoking going on and uh, a lot of the tramps were, were drunks um, the ages he gave seem to be uh, older people in their 30s 40s 50s 60s doing this uh, but you have to be in pretty good shape to for, for some of the for some of the situations uh, he was he was um, trying to like run down moving trains when they were just pulling out of the station, and that's something that younger guys can get away with. Some of the older guys sit back and they learn how to board the train before it takes off, uh, 
and and uh, yeah, it just depends on the situation. Some train yards, some cities are safer than others. Okay, they, you got to be careful of of the more popular uh, like hangout spots. Um, he would sleep uh, in in certain areas, not far from the train yards. He prefers sleeping out out in the the, the outside, and in, in per particular, um, like I don't know, like I wouldn't. They're not called tramp camps. I'm making that word up, but just just areas that uh, the tramps would prefer. They the the um the homeless shelters were not their first choice. But sometimes he did spend some nights there, all right. And it sounds like the rules at these homeless shelters is a lot different than kind of well, a lot different than Boise, Idaho. Okay, Boise, Idaho, yeah, no, they didn't shove religion down your throat before sleeping there, before having a meal. That they would have a sermon after the meal in Boise, whereas this guy, he said you had to go through a, an hour-long sermon before you could eat, all right? It, it sounds it sounds uh, really religiously strict, and then they may have loosened that up a little bit with the religious aspect uh, for for uh, these days. I mean, we're talking, you know, this his he's talking about his life that occurred in the 1980s. So... Uh, the points uh, I marked here. There's the Sally, which is the, which is which is how they call a Salvation Army. The the nick nickname for the Salvation Army. The Mormons Mission Warehouse. Now I'm heading to Salt Lake City, and that's where the Mormon Mission's warehouse is. Uh, and I looked it up on the internet. And it still exists. You still do some work for some food, so that's interesting. The missions are like communism. Um, see, now I, I have to uh, look back. Uh, yeah, blacks, I thought that was interesting that the blacks are generous. I mean, if you look at, for, for me, Chinese face reading makes it obvious that the blacks are generous. Uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, that's what makes them, makes them poor, too, because blacks tend to probably... Uh, have a tendency to be more generous and you know you give away your money being generous you're going to get poor and in a lot of ways blacks expect that to be returned back to them but it doesn't exactly work out that way um let's see yeah they, they there's a lot of hobo partners that that seem to work well you rarely saw a female uh riding the trains rarely um uh, he he ran into a couple of them out of the the many other men that he ran into. There's such thing as a home guard. That's something I'd like to look into more. But those are people that stick around a city a little longer. They're not they're not moving around quite as much. All right, um, but uh, yeah, he's he's definitely it's it's not the, exactly a, a romance uh, from a from a um, like just a tale of it's not exactly a tale of romance to to ride these trains it, where things go perfectly for you it's there is a lot of hardship you know hunger cold even overheating on the hot in the summer just just uh tramps fighting each other getting drunk um people getting hurt tripping on the rails just those types of accidents all right there's there's definitely a lot of turmoil but uh yeah it's very interesting I'm living a different life from this, you know. If if uh, if I was living in the '80s, I probably would be riding the rails more than uh, relying on my car. Um, and it looks like the future with the uh, the self-driving cars, you might find tramps hopping in those self-driving cars instead. But yeah, it's a good book.